Okay, so I'm going to address a few questions about parallel circuits that came up in uh, many of your quiz questions. Um, hopefully this will clarify some of your misunderstandings or doubts or uh, confusion. Okay, so let me real quickly draw a generic parallel circuit, right? Well, and I'm just going to put two branches in this awful looking circuit. Okay, key things remember, we have our EMF, and the voltage drop across this one, we'll call this R1, is the same as R2. Whether R2 or R1 have the same resistance doesn't matter. If this is 6 volts, there's 6 volts across here, 6 volts across here. Okay, so let's say this resistance is such that the current in there, I1, is 1 amp. Let's say the resistance of 2 is such that its current is 2 amps, right? We would figure out that this has to have half the resistance. So the total current coming into the battery or out has to be the sum of these, 3 amps. But these are independent of each other, okay? They don't, one doesn't affect the other. If I take this one out, nothing happens in R2. This is exactly what happens in your home when you have, let's say, two appliances plugged in an outlet. You turn off one, the other isn't affected. It doesn't get brighter, it doesn't get dimmer, it doesn't have more heat or less heat. It's unaffected. That's what we want in parallel circuits. So if I add a third branch, a third loop, a third resistor, these guys are not affected. They still have 1 amp and 2 amp because of Ohm's law. They have the same resistance in their branch and they still have the same voltage drop. Voltage isn't distributed. It's not broken up in parallel. It's broken up in series or divided up in series, but not so here. Okay, so if I add another branch here, let's say its resistance is such that I get 1 amp again, in other words, the same resistance R1, my overall current is still is now 4 amps. It's gone up, even though the individual resistor currents in the branches haven't changed. So if the overall current has gone to 4 amps, what we're essentially saying is the overall resistance of the circuit has gone down. In other words, more resistance means less, res more resistors means less resistance. So you might think, and how can that be? Well, mathematically, you can see that with the 1 over effective equation. Actually, I'm going to solve for this. Effective resistance for parallel is 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So if I add a number, another number here, the denominator gets bigger, therefore the reciprocal denominator um, gets smaller, less resistance. A conceptual way you can understand this is think about what does resistance ultimately depend on. Remember this equation, rho L over A? Well, in essence, if a, if a resistor is nothing more than a wire, let's say this wire represents R1. Let's say this wire represents R2, and this wire represents R3. In other words, they're in parallel with each other. And if I connect them all, what am I essentially doing is making the overall wire wider. Okay, is there's more area for the charges to move through, and more area means less resistance. It's kind of like opening up multiple lanes in a highway. Okay, the more lanes you have, the easier it is for traffic to get through. If you restrict the lanes to one or two of bottlenecks, and you get much more resistance. And similarly, in series circuits, when you put series circuits in, or excuse me, resistors in series, you're just basically lengthening the wire effectively. Here's R1, R2, R3. I've made it overall longer, so I've get more resistance. Okay, lastly, I said that there was a derivation to show you where that um, equation for resistance comes from. You don't have to know this, but some of you may be curious where that comes from. And it comes from the loop rule Oops, sorry, that should be equals. And the junction rule for a parallel circuit. Okay, I1 plus I2 plus I3. So I'm going to start with this one. So the overall current in a circuit I see is by Ohm's law equal to the EMF over the overall resistance, which we're going to call the effective resistance. Okay, individual currents obey the Ohm's law in that particular branch. So the current through branch one is the voltage drop across one divided by the resistance of one, and similarly for the other branches as well. Hopefully you can see where this is going. So what we know by the loop rule, the, and let me change this to EMF, EMF equals the voltage drop across one, across two, across three, again, loop rule, so all the 
numerators here are the same value. So I can factor them out and cancel them out, leaving with on the left 1 over the effective resistance equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And there's the derivation for that odd looking uh, effective resistance equation.